Hello everyone. So today we want to give you kind of the backstory of Prusa Research. We've been able to pull together as much information as we can about them and we're going to try to give you the story of where Prusa Research came from. Uh, Prusa is currently one of the most popular 3D printers in the entire world. They're a very well recognized brand and many makers and uh, manufacturers actually use their printers to make parts and prototypes throughout the world. So going through it, uh, Prusa Research was actually initially started in 2012. It started really, really small. It was founded by Joseph Prusa, who uh, originally got into 3D printing in 2009. He was active inside of the RepRap community, uh, which was working on building open source printers that could also be printed by printers, was one of the fundamental ideas of it. And Joseph actually ended up creating uh, versions of the heated build plate, which was very fundamental in how printers were ultimately made. But when he started up Prusa Research, he started it with the original Prusa Mendel design which was uh, the easy, one of the simple machines to build. Uh, it was based off of the RepRap Mendel machine, um, but it was a kit that people could get a hold of and actually build. And that's when Prusa Research started. Uh, there was no Kickstarter, there were no investors when it got started, he just simply started selling kits. And it was a popular product, it did quite well. In fact, uh, after about one year, they were up to five printers in their small print farm and office uh, producing parts for the Prusa Mendel printer. Um, but it continued to grow very quickly. By 2015, about two to three years in, they were up to 16 printers. And this is when it really started to break loose because 2015 was really kind of a prime year for 3D printing in general. This was really the, the peak of the market when everybody was doing great and no one could do any wrong. But uh, they got up to 16 printers then. And then in 2015, they released the Prusa i3, which became really their flagship product. The Prusa i3 was a very easy to use machine. It was a very reliable machine. It was a very well made machine. It came both as a kit and as a fully assembled machine. And in 2016, after releasing the Prusa i3, uh, they ended up having 75 printers in the print farm and were producing 500 printers per month at the beginning of the year. And with the release of the Prusa i3, it went up to 800 uh, printers per month by the end of the year. At about the same time, uh, well, the following year in 2017, after again, the release of their i3, um, they ended up taking over a factory in Prague, which allowed them to start producing up to 3000 printers per month and allowed them to continue growing even from there. And we're gonna just kind of keep on rattling off numbers from here because this is when Prusa really starts to accelerate in a very significant way. In 2018, uh, they had 300 printers in the print farm, and by the end of 2018, there were 500 in the Prusa print farm. Uh, today, there's somewhere around 800 machines from the, the last count, which was actually probably pre-COVID. So it's kind of indeterminate how many printers are actually active inside of the Prusa factory now. The print farm is still used to produce the parts for the printers themselves. This gives Prusa a huge amount of flexibility um, in how they change their designs and modify their machines, which are constantly iterating and improving. Uh, and it also gives them much more control of their supply chain, which actually has become a benefit in more recent years when other supplies have started to become more difficult to get a hold of. Throughout this entire time, uh, Prusa did maintain a YouTube channel and it allowed them to create content about how to use the machines, how to 3D print very reliably. And it was something that was a huge value add to their printers when quite frankly, they were competing with many like Chinese manufacturers in the desktop hobbyist market where they didn't always have the best resources and support. Bruce has always been very strong on support for their printers and the YouTube channel is one of those. Today, there's about it's estimated to be about 700 people working at Prusa Research in the in Prague. Uh, and in 2018, Prusa actually made the 30 under 30 Forbes cover inside of Forbes Europe, which was a pretty large milestone and a, a great piece of notoriety for a what was at the time the fastest growing technology and manufacturing company in all of Central Europe. Uh, in 2019, they had a big celebration about the fact that they had hit the milestone of 100,000 printers. And this was a big deal because even about three to five years previous, there were only about a million 3D printers on the planet. And three to four years after that, Prusa ended up having produced 100,000 of only the couple million printers on the planet. So it is a, they are a large manufacturer that has produced a large number of the machines that are 3D printers out there in the world. 
So in 2021, of course, uh, COVID came along uh, in 2020 and everyone reacted to that. And Prusa, Prusa was instrumental in uh, pushing uh, face shields and other types of PPE during the COVID pandemic. But then afterwards, they continued releasing new products. In 2021, they released their print farm system and several resin systems. Uh, they didn't release the print farm system. They announced the print farm system. Uh, it is actually still in development and still waiting to be manufactured, along with a couple of other machines that Prusa had announced in 2021. But due to supply chain constraints, they're a bit slowed down on that. But currently, it's really difficult right here at this point, just so you guys know, we are in the point of conjecture right at this point, because we're going to talk about company valuations, which is cool, but ultimately really doesn't mean anything because we only have very rough and outsider type of numbers. So this is all speculation and I want to make sure that that is very clear. So we're all good about that. Cool. So right now, Prusa uh, states on their website that they produce about 9,000 machines per month. Uh, their machines vary in price between about 800 to about 1200 or so uh, per machine depending on what the specific machine is is it a kit is it something else is it a full size machine is it a resin machine but we're basically going off the numbers of their fdm machines so we're going to just round that out and say a thousand dollars per machine uh, at nine thousand printers per month that would create a revenue of about 108 million per year but that's not including filament or any of the other types of services or any of the broader machines that they produce, even though those machines would be in lower volumes. But we're gonna round it out at about $110 million per year in revenue generated by Prusa Research. If this was two years ago, uh, Prusa would easily be valued at over a billion dollars. But today, companies inside of the 3D printing space like Desktop Metal, which are growing even faster than Prusa, and have revenues of about 200 million in 2022, Desktop Metal is gonna make $200 million this year, but only be valued at about $780 million. They don't even break the billion dollar mark, which means that even Prusa, being a European company where the markets are a little bit tighter, also wouldn't break the billion dollar mark. So even if Prusa sales are, are much higher than they state, um, they still probably are not a $1 billion company, but they're probably hovering around it. Today, based on how 3D printing markets are operating and how the stocks are traded in the investment landscape for manufacturing companies, Prusa is probably more of about a 600 to $800 million company. Uh, but again, I want to remind everybody that this is all conjecture. So do not take that too deeply. Uh, we're just playing around with the numbers that they've kind of given with us and giving you a context of how big Prusa actually is. But to have gone from a guy in a garage to a $800 million company in basically about 10 years is a very big achievement and, and Prusa deserves commendations for that kind of stuff. So uh, where Prusa is, Prusa is still not public. They are not uh, for sale and they still have not taken any investment. They've been a completely organic company this entire time. They have made investments into other companies, uh, basically acquiring about two to three different companies. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, today, where they are, they still are very dependent on the Prusa i3. It is still their flagship machine. Uh, they're on the third version of it, the Prusa i3 Mark III. Uh, throughout its history, Tesla, just like other 3D printer manufacturers, have had to deal with clones uh, from Asian markets, very low cost machines that cost 100 to 200 dollars uh, whereas Prusa's machines cost a minimum of $800. Uh, but Prusa's been able to beat this with brand and customer support and just the overall identity of the reliability of their machines. Again, brand, but the build quality has always been very good and uh, the kits that they put out have always been very consistent, reliable, and appreciated within the maker and hobbyist community, which has helped Prusa maintain a good foothold and a good market share even as these low-cost competitors come in. More recently, uh, in 2018, Prusa was the fastest growing tech company in Central Europe. In that time, Prusa seems to have been using their notoriety to uh, acquire a number of different companies. Uh, they've made investments in companies like VR Engineers and Vanilla Robotics, companies named Pilock and Pasidia, which quite frankly, several of those have nothing to do with 3D printing. Uh, but it seems like Prusa is using their wherewithal to help other uh, European startups actually get started. 
Uh, Proust has also made a couple of acquisitions uh, to expand their distribution and to expand their printers. And we'll talk about that more here in just a moment. Where they're headed, uh, Prusa is known for fairly reliable machines, and their entire market has been the growth of the hobbyist market inside of the world. People in their garage who want to build, buy another machine tool to build stuff with, as printing has become increasingly mainstream. But from their acquisitions, it appears that they're trying to move into more professional environments where their machines can be used by industrial companies. And this is very common because a lot of 3D printing companies, including Ultimaker, MakerBot, so on and so forth, have all leaned towards the prosumer slash professional users, which have higher margins and more demand as the market continues to grow because quite frankly, there's a limit to how many hobbyists are out there who are gonna buy a 3D printer. Because no matter what happens, Prusa machines are still not an item that can be used as a microwave inside of the house. So they appear to be moving into the industrial markets. They uh, purchased the majority share of companies like Trilab, which made high temperature industrial machines. And uh, they've expanded their distribution in the U.S. through uh, acquisitions like Printed Solid that allowed them to distribute their machines inside of the U United States as a European company. So they're moving in that direction. Of course, they got a big jolt from COVID uh, as most companies inside the 3D printing space did. But since then, even though they had a big spike in demand that also caused problems in supply, they're continuing to have to deal with those supply chain problems. Right now, several of their new machines are slowed down uh, due to supply chain limitations on like aluminum extrusion, which is a key component in like their Prusa XL machines and uh, their print farm system. Neither one of them have been shipped yet, even though uh, they were announced more than a year ago now. But ultimately, Prusa is, it appears to be in a very good position. They have been around for quite a while and have cemented a very strong spot for themselves inside of the 3D printing industry and inside of consumer 3D printing history. Comment down below if there's other topics you'd like us to cover or other companies you'd like us to dig into and give you the story on. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.